Welcome to the Alison Lombada Show, a podcast to help women discover and rediscover their confidence and style. I'm Alison Lombadis, and I am so glad you're here. On today's episode, I'm answering your spring style questions. I've done a Q&A like this every season in the private Outfit Formulas community group, but I thought it might be fun to open this conversation up to podcast listeners like you too. Chats like this are always so much more fun with a friend, so I'm thrilled to have my business manager and podcast co-producer, Lauren Smith, joining me for today's conversation. From crop tops to orthotics, no, we are running the gamut on this. (laughs) We have got it all on today's show. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, please take a moment to do it now. I've got an incredible lineup of episodes for you in the coming weeks, and I don't want you to miss a thing. And if you enjoyed listening to the show, I would be so grateful if you could take a moment to rate it and leave a review. I know it seems like a silly thing, but your rating and review really do help, especially for new shows like this one. Now, let's get to your questions. Hey, Lauren, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. And real talk, I was thinking about today's show recording coming up. I think this is the most excited I have ever been to record an episode of the podcast with you. We got so many good questions. There's so much fun things to talk about. So I'm just so excited to jump in. I am too. This is always one of my favorite things that we do every single season in the Alpha Formulas community. And I just love being able to give a little more context behind the pieces in each capsule and on the shopping list and and just answer any of the, the style questions that come up too. It's super fun. Absolutely. So the questions that we're going to cover today, most of them are coming directly from our Outfit Formulas community. They always get the inside scoop. We do also have a couple of questions that we collected through from your Instagram as well. Before we dive into those questions, for people who may be new to the podcast or have this episode sent to them by a friend and they have no idea what we're talking about, can you give us a quick refresher of of Outfit Formulas. What is Outfit Formulas? How does it work? Yes, yes. So this is my favorite thing to talk about. (laughs) So Outfit Formulas is really like meal planning for your closet. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, I really created the solution to getting dressed every day for myself. (laughs) I felt like I had a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear. I came from the space of having to really just rebuild my wardrobe from scratch after working in an office for many years and then transitioning to working from home. And what I do is just give you a framework to follow. You get a shopping list of pieces that are closet staples and also some on-trend items every season. And then I give you a different outfit formula created from the pieces on that list for you to style each and every day. And honestly, it just is created to make getting dressed the easiest thing that you do all day. And also give you that guidance when you walk into the store armed with a list of things that you actually need. It helps to really just curate those shopping decisions for you. And as always, we encourage women to shop your closet first because so many of us have more pieces in there than we even realize that we can create outfits out of what we already own. Absolutely. We we love being able to shop our closets, getting the most bang for your buck for those pieces that you already have, that you already own. So in terms of Pieces that if people are interested in outfit formulas, they want to sign up, what kind of things can they expect to see in our latest outfit plan for April 2024? Maybe a a few closet staple pieces, maybe a couple of the trendier pieces. What any any teasers you can give us of what they can expect to see? Yeah, so this one is there are a lot of closet staples in the April 24 outfit drop because I feel like This is a season of trending classics, if that makes sense. We're seeing a lot more classic items out there for spring. Uh, We're seeing things like, you know, striped tees and white tees, uh, dark wash jeans, denim jackets, trench coats. Uh, A a classic that is currently trending is the blazer. (laughs) We're seeing hoop earrings. And then on the trend side, again, that blazer is is sort of like a trendier item, but it's also a really classic piece that's not going to go out of style within you know, the next few years. We're seeing the open knit sweaters, which is one of my favorite trends. I feel like it's super wearable. And it's one of those pieces that can cover, you know, the warmer days of spring and the cooler days of spring too, because you can layer it over something that keeps you warmer. I love the lady jackets that we're seeing everywhere. Those little, you know, Chanel lady jackets with the buttons and and all the things. Uh, And rattan accents on footwear. I think that's a trend also that we're going to see carrying over into summer as, as we start to get into later spring 
uh, and and some of the drops and new arrivals that are coming into stores. I'm seeing more and more of that rattan accent on sandals and athletic sneakers, which I love. They're my favorite. I'm wearing mine today. <laughs> Amazing. I love those teasers. Love seeing those pieces combined into the formulas that you've designed uh, for us this season. Our members are already in the community. They have been loving the pieces that you've selected. So if you are listening to this, if you're ready for a refresh, if you're ready to get your style mojo back and need a little bit of structure, a framework to follow, an easy to follow list. So I'm going to tell you exactly what to wear every single day. Uh, you can learn more about outfit formulas, head to alisonlobatis.com slash podcast. We will also have an exclusive listener discount code there. Uh, so make sure to check that out. We will also have that code for you in the show notes as well. And now we can head into our style Q&A questions. So again, these questions are coming to us from our community members and the first question comes from Melissa, who asked Allison, if you were going to invest in one item to enhance your spring style this spring, what would it be? Oh, gosh, this is hard. So if I had to pick one personally, it would be the wide leg jeans. This was the trend that I was most excited to try out this season. And it's also my favorite thing that I added to my wardrobe this spring. I have been wearing them like three times a week. <laughs> and, and also, I feel like this is such a good time to update your denim collection. If it's been a few years, uh, you know, this there's every single silhouette of denim represented right now. So if you are not into jean shopping, if this is something that is a super struggle for you and you feel like you can't find that perfect pair of jeans this is your time to get out there and try it again. I promise you, you're going to find something that works for you. Uh, my second thing has got to be my sneakers. And we, we talked about this already, but I swear I'd like, I find an excuse every day to put my sneakers on. Like even if I start out the morning or <laughs> I'll wear my, my mules or my loafers, eventually I end up in my white sneakers every single day. I love them. Do you have one thing, Lauren, that you're loving this spring? Oh, okay. So I, I have been doing the denim update, the denim shift. It, again, I still don't feel like I'm 100% there, but um, trying to, I'm intentionally looking for silhouettes that are not skinny jeans. When I am looking right now, I do have two pairs that I've been, that I did buy that I've been wearing more often. I'm wearing a pair right now. I think I'm, I, I'm struggling with a couple of fit issues only because I think I am between sizes. And I think especially with plus size, they is, I think a lot of retailers assume that when you need a bigger size, you need bigger all over. And I don't. So I'm feeling like I'm, I've got a lot of extra fabric going on. So I'm looking for kind of like a more fitted around the, the waist and then a wide leg silhouette. So I'm still on the lookout, but I'm learning again. This is what I love so much about, you know, people, I think a lot of times just want to like snap their fingers and have an instant solution. Everything's fixed. It's a journey. It is always a journey. Like I've been doing this, you know, part of your program for seven years. You've been doing this for well over a decade now. And I think, I think those struggles are normal. And the only way to push through them is by, by doing it. Right. So, uh, learning, Oh, I like this element. I don't like this. So now I know better for next time. So denim definitely. And then the other one I know for sure. And it's, I, we did not plan this, but I am totally matching up with you. It is also sneakers. You know how much I hate shopping. Mm -hmm. I actually took my butt over to the outlet mall the other day to try on those new balance sneakers that honestly, I think have been in our guides now since last fall and I've been eyeing them and loving them. And y'all, I move so slow in terms of making purchases for my wardrobe, but every season that I've seen them, I've been obsessed and I keep holding off on buying them because I'm just like, oh, I don't need another pair of shoes. But again, when your basics are covered, I don't need to buy my basics. So now I have room in my budget to, to splurge on some wants just because I can. So one of those splurges that I'm I'm allowing myself to have this season is those sneakers. A lot of the I, I had to Google where the New Balance store is in my city and two of the three locations have permanently closed. The only one that is still open is at the outlet mall, which means you get what you get. 
and they had a half size below me and a half size above me and not my size, but I tried both of them on. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the website. It is definitely those New Balance 327 sneakers. One day they will be mine. Yes, we're manifesting it. <laughs> it's going to happen. And, and I love that you made that point about, you know, curating pieces over time. There are still pieces that I have on my list that I have not found that perfect heck yes item yet. And I know that if I'm willing to wait for it and find the right piece that I'm going to get so much more wear out of that item than just buying something to fill a gap, you know, or something that's on the list. So, and also the, the irony of two women who hate shopping, doing a style podcast. All right, let's just put it out there. I hate shopping too, <laughs> which is another reason why I created outfit for you. Let's just, I'm like, I want to make it easy for everybody. Let's just, let's make it easy. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, we are owning it, right? The non-shopping style ladies, I suppose. <laughs> so our next question came to us from Rachel. Uh, she is saying, I have always only used one purse every day, but with the outfit formula spring 2024 plan, I plan on using three. What advice do you have to stay organized when switching purses? So a few years ago, I discovered purse organizers on Amazon and totally went down this rabbit hole because I had the same issue. I've got more than one purse that I love and want to carry and it's just such a pain. I would just default to grabbing the same one every day because my stuff was already in there. So I went onto Amazon. I looked for an organizer that would fit into my various sizes of purses. And I bought one and I started switching purses constantly. And I've been doing it ever since then. Seriously, they are such a game changer. You can just kind of like take the measurements of your bag and figure out which one's going to work best for you. They have all different kinds of slots for all your things. I put my phone in them. Even when I don't switch purses, I find it just so much easier to find the stuff in my purse because I'm like, okay, here's the lip gloss. Here's my phone. All of my cards are in this area. I stopped carrying a wallet because I have like just little card case now. And it's just so much easier. It's so simplified. So, you know, measure your smallest bag, order one that's going to fit that one. And that's going to make swapping so much quicker and easier. Oh, I love this. And it's like you say, because you're swapping that insert, your items are always in the same area in every purse, regardless of what purse you're, you're wearing. So that makes finding things easier. I love that. I've also heard women recommend they'll do like kind of like the pouch system. So they'll have, you know, a pouch for their lip gloss and their makeup, and then a pouch where they keep their I'm trying to think, what do I have in my purse? Like their, you know, their wallet and their cards and their loyalty cards and all that. So that then you're just, instead of having to move everything individually, you're pulling like maybe three or four little pouches and swapping those over. That's another option. And then another thing that I saw recently on TikTok is somebody, a woman had like a front entryway in her foyer and had a cabinet there with a drawer and she cleared out that drawer and kind of made it like her purse drawer. So whenever she would switch her purses, she could just open that drawer and had like any sunglasses, you know, gum, like all of the, the things, hand lotion, anything you want to have in your purse. And she would just come home. And if she knew she wasn't going to wear that purse the next day, she'd put all of those things into that drawer and it was right at the door. So then the next day as she's heading out, she knew exactly where everything would be, opens her drawer, pops in what she needs for that day. And out the door she goes. And I went, I've never seen that before. So I thought that was a pretty clever tip as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. And, you know, we talk a lot about decision fatigue. And honestly, this is kind of one of those things. It's not really decision fatigue per se, but it is, it's bandwidth and it's energy when you're trying to find things in your purse. And it's, it's annoying, right? <laughs> it's just one of those little tolerations that we talk about that you can do away with if you just do something as simple as organizing it once. And then it's done. And and every time you need something, you know where it is. So I love those tips. So good. Absolutely. Our next question comes to us from Edie, who asked, if you had to start from square one with no clothing items, what would you buy? This is a good one. I had to think through this for a minute. So honestly, the answer to this question is going to depend on your lifestyle every time you've got to decide what are the clothes that I'm wearing most often and start from there. But if I were starting from scratch again, and even when I look back on my journey, when I started this, you know, 12, 13 years ago, I was reinventing my wardrobe. 
I had to think about what are the things I'm going to be reaching for most often. And for me, it was again, denim. I wear jeans almost every single day of my life. Even for dressier events, I just dress up my jeans. I wear a lot of t-shirts and layering pieces like cardigans and casual blazers for my toppers. I wear my denim jacket all the time. So those would definitely be on my list. I would do my tees and tanks and solids and stripes because I am obsessed with stripes, as we all know. <laughs> and then a pair of casual shoes to pair everything up with. And I would probably get uh, a pair of like comfy wedges or something that I could use to dress out my pieces a little bit more. But really, that would be the base that I would start with. And honestly, I could live within that capsule very comfortably most of the year. I'm basically hearing a lot of cl closet staple pieces here. And again, that like when you have yes. those basics in place, then it's easier to add in those trends, those accent pieces that are going to keep your wardrobe fresh, that are going to keep your look current and up to date, that are going to keep you excited to get dressed. But again, when you're trying to get dressed without having those foundation pieces, we shared before, it's like trying to bake a cake without flour, sugar, eggs it's just going to fall flat. So you really do need those foundation pieces. And, and that's where you really should be starting. And that's what's going to serve you the best in the long run. You're going to also get your most the most bang for your buck when you invest in those pieces, you know, as much as your budget allows. And, and then, you know, as you evolve, as you learn more about your style, then you can start looking at investing more if, when your budget does allow in higher quality of those same closet staple pieces. So, so much good stuff to learn there. I love that you're, you know, obviously pointing people in the direction of those closet staple foundation pieces because that's where it all begins. It definitely is. So next up, our question comes from Cheryl, who is asking what type of belts are in style? Rachel also asked us a question about belts. Are belts trending? When should I be adding them to an outfit? Yes, great question. So belts are trending again. We're starting to see them come back. Uh, if you follow a lot of influencers, you'll notice that over the past few years, we have not seen a lot of belts, uh, but I was so excited to start seeing them back this spring. And they are pretty much neutral classic belts like woven leather. I'm not seeing anything like overly trendy in this space, nothing too skinny or too thick. They're kind of just that medium width. And spoiler alert, so I'm gonna drop a little <laughs> Easter egg Alpha Formulas members will have a belt on the shopping list for the May app drop. And I am super excited about this. I bought this belt myself and I cannot wait to start styling it because it's been, it's been a hot minute since I've worn a belt myself. Excellent. I love that. I did bring, I brought a little prop. This is not the one you're going to see on the May drop, but this sort of woven belt style, if you're not watching us on YouTube, you can hop over there, search Allison Lombatis, you'll see the podcast and you can see this belt, but sort of that woven leather style. Like I say, this one's a bit of a darker color, but I think you've got more of a tan, lighter color belt uh, styled for our May app drop. Yes, we do. But it's, it is very similar to that. Awesome. Love that. And yay for a spoiler, a little sneak peek. Everyone loves a little sneak peek. <laughs> Our next question, and actually, I think we got two from Michelle. So Michelle sent in her first question. Do you have any tips on how to clean white sneakers and the rubber white plastic of sneakers and shoes? Mine never seemed to get back to the original white color. So <laughs> I owe the response to this question to my husband, Craig, because he happens to be a master at cleaning sneakers. You know how they have that kiosk in the mall where the guy cleans the sneakers? I'm like, I don't need that guy because I got that guy at home. And his secret weapon is Dawn Power Wash, the stuff that you use for your dishes. I know it's crazy. We, I think years ago, he did like a lot of trial and error with, with bleach and bleach can yellow, especially canvas. So you don't really want to go overboard with that. And also it's just not good for the fabric on the sneakers too. It can kind of like eat away at it sometimes. It's too harsh. I've also heard good things about Magic Eraser. I've never tried it, but I, I do think that it's also good for cleaning the, the rubber on sneakers. But seriously, Dawn Power Wash, we swear by it. We use it on everything from laundry stains to you name it. It is, it's some amazing stuff. Magic in a bottle. Love it. Here for it. <laughs> Michelle's second question was, please explain how to wear booties with different lengths and width of jeans. What if you roll up the hem? Do we still 
leave a space between the bottom hem and the top of the booty? If we don't leave a space, what about cropped jeans? Do we show socks in the space between the top of the booty and the jeans? Help a girl out. <laughs> it's also confusing, isn't it? Oh my gosh. It is. And the rules are changing. And, and, you know, I've, I've seen some really good infographics. If you are really interested in this, you can deep dive in Pinterest. There were some great infographics there on this, but there used to be a rule to leave two fingers width of skin between the top of the booty and the cuff of the jeans. However, that space has officially closed. So the new way to wear this look is with the top of the booty under the hem of the jeans, which is why we're starting to see more and more of the higher shaft ankle boots that have been really super popular this past winter. I've seen them kind of carrying over into spring too, but that's really the new way that we're seeing them being worn. It's that it doesn't have that gap anymore. Even with cropped jeans, you're going to want to pair those with a little bit of a higher shaft boot so that it kind of goes up under the jeans. All right. Good to know. It's it's so fascinating when like, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, is that a huge change? No, but I think it's those little attention to detail things that really make a big impact on feeling current up to date. And, and especially when there's so many, you know, rolling, cuffing and how much space and with this gene or that gene, there's so many uh, variables to getting to the right answer. So this is a this is a a big clarification, and I think one that is going to help a lot of our listeners out because making those transitions when we've been doing a thing for so long, just like you know, right now when we're we're not that they're completely out, but we're moving away from skinny jeans and we're moving more into those other silhouettes. So making those big leap transitions can feel uh, difficult, and I know that hearing it from the expert is going to be super helpful for our listeners today. Next up, our question is from Teresa, who asked, speaking of jeans, do you think wide leg jeans will be around for very long? Or can I just wait it out and stick to my straight leg jeans? Good question. So as I mentioned before, it is truly an anything goes season for denim, which means we're seeing all styles represented at the moment. Do I see that changing much in the coming years? Probably not. I think we're going to continue to see this diversity in styles and lengths and fits and cuts, which is amazing. So wide leg jeans, yes, are going to stick around a bit longer, but have no fear. If you love straight leg jeans, that is a classic style. It is not going anywhere either. It's also going to be sticking around yet. It is a trending classic right now. I also still say I'm, I'm, I'm holding firm to this. I don't think skinny jeans are necessarily out of style. I just think they're not having a moment. They're probably going to continue not having a moment for a few more years, maybe. But again, I think that we're just kind of seeing this representation of all of the decades of style when it comes to denim in, in, in one place. So it's a really, a really fun time to jean shop and a fun time to try out and experiment with some new silhouettes and get used to it. You know, at first I was totally against the mom jean trend. And then I finally broke down and bought a pair that fit me well. And now I'm in love with them. And same thing with the wide leg jeans. I was like, Ugh, I don't know that I want to try this trend. But now that I experimented with it, wore them around the house a little bit just to get comfortable in it. And I'm totally in love with it. So if you feel like you need to shake things up a little bit, this is a great place to experiment and try out something that may be just a little smidge outside of your comfort zone and see how it feels to you. You may end up just finding a new jeans fit that you are absolutely in love with. Absolutely. And I love that tip about wearing it around the house because th we t we talk a lot about not settling with the pieces that you're wearing if it's not a heck yes it's a no and paying attention to is something not feeling quite right because because it is not a heck yes or just because it's outside your comfort zone so being willing to explore and try it and doing it at home that's such a that's a safe place to test something out and see and if you don't love it pack it back up, throw it back in the box, do that return. But yeah, it, I love that you're willing to try new things. You know, I think even hearing from, again, the style expert, she's also getting out of her comfort zone. So if Allison can do it, you guys can do it too. Yes, I, I, I um, style is a skill and I'm still learning. <laughs> Absolutely. So our next question comes from Joe, and we posted this call for questions in our community group. When we posted this call for questions, we also shared a photo of you, Allison, wearing a pair of pink 
high heels. So Joe's question for Allison specifically is about her shoes, which I think she also has brought to show listeners on YouTube. So Joe's question is, how do you keep shoes like the ones in your photo on your feet without them slipping with every step? I have a similar pair, but they just won't stay on my feet. So what tips do you have for Joe? Great question. For those watching on YouTube, these are the infamous shoes and I love them so much. I try to find excuses to wear these shoes more often. <laughs> They're so fun. Yeah. So you really have to get the right fit. Honestly, I think that that is the most important aspect of this. You know, maybe you need to size down half a size if it's slipping off the back of your foot. I understand with heels like this, especially the foot slides forward, right? So buying those little anti-grip inserts that go in the toe of the shoe are going to help with that issue. I also, you know, with a pair of shoes like this, it's a little bit harder, but even with loafers, I have little footy socks that just cover the toe area and come around the back and they have little non-slip grippies on them. And they also help my shoes stay on, but there's, there's tons of little gadgets out there, not only to make your shoes feel more comfortable, but also so that you are not going to get them slipping off your foot. So give it a try and let me know how it goes. That is excellent. I love it's so true. There are so many I I learned about what are they called little like moleskin like stickers almost from our community where somebody was asking about oh my shoe is like rubbing and causing some friction and I'm getting blister it's uncomfortable and they said oh you just need to buy these little you know couple like less than ten dollars from Amazon put this on your shoe and then it won't be a problem anymore so love all the little uh, tips and tricks that uh, are available for us in our shoe woes. Uh, we will absolutely link a couple of those up for you in the show notes at alisonlobatis.com slash podcast. Those anti-slip grip inserts, those footy socks that Allison mentioned, we'll also provide you with some info on those moleskin little stickies as well, because nobody has time for sore feet. That That is not the life we are here to live. Ain't got time for that. <laughs> so our next question comes from Donna. And this is specifically about our current outfits that we're styling in the month of April. What influenced you most in creating this capsule wardrobe? Oh, I always love this question. So my muse for the April capsule has to be the pink loafers. I saw them. It was love at first sight. I knew I wanted them in my wardrobe. And like, if I'm buying them to wear, then I'm going to put them in the capsule too. So uh, that was definitely one of the major influences. But I also was thrilled when I walked into H&M and I saw my linen blazer in there that I bought last spring because I wore that blazer so many times last spring all the way through fall. And it really just kind of started to become my go-to lightweight layer that I was wearing. I mean, even in the summer months, I was pairing it up with shorts on days like when we would travel to the cooler climates or even, you know, sometimes I get cold in grocery stores and things. And that was, that became my new go-to favorite. Uh, so I definitely knew I wanted to include those two things. And then I would have to say the wide leg jeans were the third thing that I was really excited about trying myself. And I really feel like these April outfits are such a good representation of what I have in my own closet right now. I think I only bought three items for this capsule. I bought the pink mules or the pink loafers. I bought a graphic, a new graphic tee, the one that's on the list. And I bought the wide leg jeans and I have worn those things so much. I already had the open knit sweater. That was actually a gift that my daughter had got for me. So I knew I wanted to include that too. But, but that's the beauty of outfit for me is that sometimes you don't have to do a lot of shopping if you don't want to. And other times our members are like, ah, oh, shucks, I wanted to shop a little bit more and I can shop my closet for everything. But it's great to know that you have that budget available to you if you do want to go out and buy something fun that's been on your list or or try a different trend that you want to try to incorporate into the capsule pieces. Absolutely. I know I'm with you. It always makes me laugh when people, when our members, they'll see the new list and then they come in in our group and they'll say, I'm kind of bummed because I literally don't have to buy anything. I can shop my closet for all of these looks. Uh, and my, my suggestion whenever I see that, because I'm like, if you have room in your budget to shop, and you don't actually need anything for these outfits, foundation garments, go through, go through that undie drawer, get rid of anything that has holes in it, get rid of the stretched out bras with the wires that are poking out, we all have them. This is the time if you've got that room in your budget, go update your foundation garments, you're going to feel so much better for doing that. And you know, again, those will serve you for multiple 
seasons, years to come, and there'll always be a new list coming. So, and, and always new trends changing. So eventually there will be a thing where you can shop again, but uh, if you don't need anything and you have some room in your budget, check out that undie drawer. I bet you got some things you can refresh in there. <laughs> no, such a, uh, such a brilliant idea. Yes, 100%. And it just makes you feel better in your outfit too, knowing you, you may be the only one who knows, but it feels really good. And also I'd like to recommend that if you're not using your budget in that season to buy the things on the list, it may be a good time for you to upgrade something that is in your closet. You know, I've, I've told the story before about my $20 leopard flats from Target that I wore out and I wore them for probably two or three years before I finally said, okay, I'm going to invest in the leather pair of flats that I still have to this day. But these are opportunities for you to really just look at some things that you may need to upgrade or replace. Maybe it's a new white t-shirt. I mean, we can always use one of those. So yes, yeah, such, such a good tip, but yeah, foundational pieces, always a good idea. The girls will thank you. So next up, we also have a couple of questions from your Instagram followers. If you're not following Allison yet on Instagram, uh, her handle is at Allison Lombatis. You can check her out there. And we have our first question is coming to us from Laura, who asked crop tops, yes or no. In the same vein, Melanie asked, what styles are trending for tops this season? So crop top tees tanks are totally trending for spring and summer 2024 and these pieces pair extremely well with the high-waisted styles that we're seeing so the high-waisted shorts and jeans and pants and if they are outside your comfort zone remember there's no such thing as age-appropriate style but i do understand that some things may feel outside of your comfort zone and that's fine. You don't, you can skip the trend. You don't have to try the trend, but if you do want to try the trend, try pairing it as a layer under your blazer or your denim jacket and pairing it with those high-waisted pants or jeans that are going to come up a little bit higher if you don't want to expose your belly in the process. So yeah, those are, are totally on trend. I'm also seeing in the tops department striped oversized button downs in both like the classic blue and white stripe. Also brighter solid colors. I was in Target the other day and they had this beautiful rack of just bright solid and they are so incredibly versatile. You can wear them just kind of half tucked with jeans. You can wear them as a layering piece. They can even be like a swimsuit cover up as we, as we head into the summer months. Uh, but I'm seeing those in just about every store and also those open knit, open knit sweaters. They're everywhere, literally everywhere. And maybe I'm just seeing things because they're on the list, <laughs> but I've seen them in so many stores and they're such a great lightweight piece that you can wear all the way through the warmer days of spring too. Lots of fun options for styling this spring and summer. I love this. Donna asked a question, what kind of boots are current for spring? Are ankle boots totally out now? So I'm not really seeing a lot of boots for spring. I live in Texas though. So this could be a regional thing. And I know that it's still cold in many parts of the country, but the higher shaft ankle boots are what I am seeing that is on trend. And some of those are carrying over from the winter months. If, if you are still wearing boots, which I understand a lot of women are, that is, is definitely the trend that you're going to be looking for. I have seen a lot of block heels and wedges and fun sandals on the horizon, which we will definitely talk about when we get closer to summer in our Q&A at that point in time. Uh, and if those are styles that you're wanting to try, I find that or I feel that there are a lot more comfortable styles being represented than there were in the past, even just in a pair of sandals that I bought the other day, they have kind of like these really comfortable insoles in them. So thank you, shoe gods. You're hearing what women really want. We want cute shoes that don't hurt our feet. So I'm excited to see that that seems to be something that is a trend everywhere, not just among people who need, you know, orthotics or shoes like that, but also for everyone, like we have comfy shoes now. I'm so happy. All the praise hands for comfortable shoes here for it. We have a question from Shelby and Pam, actually, both submitted questions about denim shorts. What lengths are we wearing? What wash are we wearing? Uh, are we, is Destructed still a thing? What is going on this spring and summer for our denim shorts? There's a lot going on. <laughs> I've done a little bit of early intel and I'm starting to see some of our retailers are showing us what we can expect in trends for denim. And some of those longer and baggier styles are trending for summer 2024. 
And again, there's a little bit of everything out there, but the mom jean shorts that were very popular in the 90s are making a big comeback. And I'm personally excited about this because they tend to be a little bit on the longer side, a little bit more forgiving, and they can come up a little bit higher. So I do love that about them. Also, paper bag waist shorts are definitely on trend. Uh, Bermuda styles are out there. I'm seeing frayed hems, not as much distressing as fraying. I, I think that we're getting away from the overly distressed jeans that we'd seen the past few years and, and shorts as well. And I'm not really seeing a lot of short shorts out there. Maybe it's the retailers I'm looking at, but even, you know, some of the retailers that cater more to junior sizing, I just don't see as many of the short shorts out there. It's more the mom shorts and the longer styles that are trending. Interesting. All right. We, we will we will have to keep an eye on that development and report back over the next uh, month or two to see if the short shorts do end up making an appearance this summer or are we moving into those longer fit with a little more coverage, which, hey, you do you. You do what works for you, but I'm here for it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Our next question comes to us from Melissa. Melissa is asking, do you know of any spring shoes or brands that will accommodate orthotic? I don't know of brands that are specifically designed to accommodate orthotics, but I do know if you're looking for cute, comfy shoes that Vionic, and I may not say this right, but I think it's Vivea is how you say the brand. They both have really cute, fashionable looking shoes that are also super comfortable, super supportive. I know that women that do struggle in this space have reported back lots of Alpha Formulas members are in love with these two brands and have great things to say about both of them. And we'll we'll link these up too, if you're not familiar with them. Absolutely. I also think this is a great area for crowdsourcing from our community. If you are looking, if you want, if you want a, a safe space to ask style related questions, we would love to have you join us in our Closet Crew community group on Facebook. It's a free group you can hop in there, just head to Facebook, search for Outfit Formulas Closet Crew, and you can post your question in there. And there are over 30,000 women in there. I am certain that you will get some excellent recommendations in there. We will also uh, link that group for you up in the show notes at alisonlobatis.com slash podcast. Our next question is coming to us from Jen. Jen is asking, this is what do we say? You're definitely in your top three questions. Allison, tell me about your necklaces. Can you send me a link, which we will, Jennifer, we will get you that link, but a link for your double necklace. Absolutely. This is this is one of my top questions. I have it on right now if you're watching. So I did an Instagram reel a few days ago, and I kind of outlined my everyday jewelry pieces that I wear literally almost every day. I've got my little hoops that I wear. And then of course, my uh, layered necklaces, which these are actually three different necklaces. The top two pieces are from Allison and Aubrey. And then the bottom monogram pendant is from Brooke in York. So the thing that I love about these necklaces, I love the look of layered necklaces, but I am too lazy to attach and unattach all of them. So I have them on this magnetic clasp that I got on Amazon. And this thing is a game changer. It keeps them from getting tangled. It makes it super easy to put on and off. And it was honestly the thing that was like the total game changer for me where I went from not wanting to just like, I would put on one of my necklaces and I'm like, ah, I don't want to make the effort to layer them, but I just love this look so much. And this makes it so much easier. If you don't have a magnetic clasp yet, you need one. It's life changer. It keeps them untangled. So good. You so good. totally do need one because again, if you're not watching this on YouTube, Allison just did a, a little magic trick while she was talking and she just took off all of her necklaces at once held them up to the screen, showed them to us, and then popped them back on, and they look flawless and perfect. So yes, you need that magnet clip. Again, we will also, <laughs> we will put all of those in the show notes for you at alisonlovatis.com slash podcast. I'm pretty sure, I think Brooke and York almost always has a 15% off code as well that works on your necklace. So we'll make sure to include that in the show notes as well. So you can grab that discount. And I think you have it personalized. Is that right? It's like a monogram. So you can get it personalized from the brand. I do. I've been in love with monograms since I was a little girl. And yes, this one has my initials on it. Awesome. Well, like I say, you will find all of those in the show notes. And Allison, that is our last question for today. 
It is. And I would love to hear your thoughts about today's Q&A conversation. Did any of my answers surprise you? If you've got style questions and you need support, then please join my free Closet Crew community group. There are over 30,000 women there who are sharing outfits and style tips and shopping recommendations every single day. And it's a great place to ask your questions and get them answered in real time. All you have to do is search Outfit Formulas Closet all you have to do is search Outfit Formulas Closet Crew on Facebook to find us. And I always love to connect with this community. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube as Allison Lombatis. I'd love to hear from you. So please look me up and give me a follow. And remember, you are worthy. Style is a skill anyone can learn. And closet contentment is possible. I believe in you. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you enjoyed today's conversation and you want to get on the fun too, our next outfit drop for May is happening on Monday. So now is the perfect time to sign up. You can get a discount code at allisonlombatis.com slash podcast. And I would love to see you in our community.